Hi friends, welcome back to the channel and to the fifth episode of Research Papers Summary. Today I'll be covering the paper Luke, Deep Contextualized Entity Representation with Entity Aware Self-Attention. This is an AMNLP 2020 paper that introduces a new way of representing entities that achieve state-of-the-art results in five entity-related tasks, covering entity typing, relation classification, name entity recognition, closed style QA, and extractive QA. In today's video, I'll first talk about the limitation of using contextualized web representation to represent entities. I will then dive into the three main contributions of this paper, which together forms a solution to this limitation. Thirdly, I will cover the Luke Transformer in more details. Fourthly, I'll briefly cover the results of the Luke Transformer, which, to be honest, there's not really much to cover since Luke has achieved state-of-the-art results in five entity-related tasks. That's pretty much all there is to know about the results, but I thought it'd still be good to cover some of the results briefly. And lastly, I will talk about some of the ablation studies and results covered in this paper. I hope you find this video useful. Let's get to it. If you're new here, my name is Ryan. I'm a first-year PhD student based in London, and on this channel, we share actionable insights on different topics in AI research, entrepreneurship, and life design, encouraging us to take more actions and live a happier and more intentional life. If these topics sound interesting to you, consider subscribing. Okay, let's jump straight into it. Contextualized web representation based on Transformer has yielded strong performance in many different NLP tasks. However, they're still not suitable for entity-related tasks because firstly, they do not output span-level representation of entities. Secondly, many entity-related tasks require the model to reason over the relationships between entities. Traditional self-attention mechanism only captures the relations between words, but entities are made up of multiple words in the model, and so it's difficult to capture the relations between entities. Thirdly, word-based pre-training tasks of contextualized word embeddings are not suitable for building entities' representation, because predicting a masked word is much easier than predicting the entire entity, which, as I said, is made up of multiple words. And so, having said that, the paper has proposed a solution for this. The three main contributions from this paper are as follows. First, they propose LUC, which stands for Language Understanding with Knowledge-Based Embeddings. LUC is a new contextualized representation for entity-related tasks. It is trained on a new pre-trained objective which randomly maps words and entities using Wikipedia Entity Annotated Corpus. Secondly, the paper introduced Entity-Aware Self-Attention Mechanism, which takes into account the type of tokens when computing the attention scores whether that be words or entities, which I will cover in more detail in the next section of the video. And thirdly, Luke achieved state-of-the-art results on five popular datasets. Let's now explore Luke in more details. Luke is a multi-layer bidirectional transformer based on Robetta. The main difference between Luke and other contextualized word embeddings is that Luke makes the distinction between words and entities inputs token. And so the inputs to the Luke model are either words or entities token, and the outputs are the contextualized representation of each token. Luke has three main aspects. First, we have the input representation, which is computed using three types of embeddings. The first type of embedding is token embeddings, which represents the token, either words or entities. Here we would have word token embeddings and entity token embeddings. The second type of embeddings is positional embeddings, which represents the position of token in a word sequence. The third type of embeddings is entity type embeddings, which represents that the token is an entity. The input representation of a word is computed using the token embeddings plus the position embeddings. The input representation of an entity is the token embeddings plus the position embeddings plus the entity type embeddings. Next, we have entity-aware self-attention. Self-attention mechanism is the foundation of transformer that allows tokens to relate to each other using attention score. This is the traditional formula for self-attention. Given the input vectors, the traditional self-attention would compute the output vector for each input vector by computing the weighted sum of the transformed input vectors. Q, K, and V are the query key and value matrices. Because Luke handles two types of tokens, the paper believed that it would be beneficial to include token type information when computing the attention score. To do so, we introduce an entity-aware query mechanism that has a different query matrix for each possible pair of token types. The attention score is therefore computed as follows. The first one is the normal case where we only have one type of token, the words token, and the rest are the different combinations of word entity pairs, each one having their own query matrix. And thirdly, we will talk about the pre-training objective used to train the Luke Transformer. To pre-train Luke, they used a conventional mass language model and a new pre-training task to learn entity representations. They used hyperlinks in Wikipedia as entity annotations and trained the model using Wikipedia data. They randomly masked X percentage of entities and trained the model to predict the masked entities. The final loss function for Luke is the mass language model loss plus cross entropy loss on predicting masked entities.
Let's now dive into the results. The paper has ran experiments on five entity-related tasks, all of which have very similar model architecture of one simple linear layer on top of the token representations. The first entity-related task is entity typing. Here, the task is to predict types of entity in a given sentence. The dataset used here is the open entity dataset that consists of nine general entity types. The evaluation metrics here are precision, recall, and micro F1 score. In terms of results, as you can see, Luke has outperformed both the Robetta baseline and the K adapter to achieve state-of-the-art results. The second entity-related task is relation classification. Here, the task is to classify the relations between head and tail entities. The dataset used here is the TACRIC dataset, which covers over 100,000 sentences with 42 types of relationships. The evaluation metrics are the precision, recall, and micro F1 score as well. In terms of the results, Luke has achieved another state-of-the-art results, outperforming baseline Robetta and K adapter. The next task on the list is name entity recognition. Here, the task is to identify entities in a given sentence. The dataset is the 2003 CodeNNL dataset. The evaluation metric is the span level F1 score. And again, Luke has achieved state-of-the-art results here. The fourth task is the closest style question answering. Here, the task is given a question and a passage, the task is to find the entity that fits the missing entity in the passage. The dataset used here is record dataset of over 120,000 examples. The challenging part about this dataset is that most of the question cannot be solved without external knowledge. Following existing work, we evaluate the models using exact match and token level F1 score on the depth and test sets. And as you can see here, Lucas out from Robetta, both on the single and ensemble version. And lastly, we have the extractive question answering. Here, the task is very similar to the closest style question answering, except that the task is to predict the answer span in the passage rather than just an entity span. The dataset used here is the famous squad 1.1 dataset by Stanford that consists of 100,000 question answers pairs. And just like the closest style question answering, the evaluation metric is the exact match and the token level F1 score on the depth and test set. And similar to the results of other tasks, Luke has achieved state of the art results by a slight margin here. Let's now dive into the last section of this video covering the different ablation studies in this paper. The first one is the effects of entity representation. One of the main contributions of this paper is that they have different representation for words and entities. And so we want to see the impact of entity representation on the performance on downstream tasks. To assess this, we compare the performance of Luke with and without entity representation. And here are the results. As you can see here, Luke without entity input score lower F1 scores on both NER tasks and extractive QA tasks showcasing the effectiveness of entity representations. The second ablation study covers the effects of entity-aware self-attention. Here we compare the performance of our entity-aware self-attention with the traditional self-attention mechanism, and here are the results. Here you can see that the entity-aware self-attention mechanism consistently outperforms the original mechanism across all five entity-related tasks. We also see a big improvement on two specific tasks, the relation classification and QA tasks. We believe this is because of a mechanism allows the model to better capture the relationships between entities. And lastly, we look at the effects of extra pre-training steps. Luke is based on Robetta pre-trained on 200,000 steps. Past research has said that with contextualized work representation, if you increase the training steps, the performance on downstream tasks will automatically increase. Here we want to see if Luke's state-of-the-art performance is driven by the mechanism introduced in this paper or by longer training steps. And so as you can see on this table, we train another model based on Robetta with extra pre-training step using the mass language model objective, totaling 400,000 pre-training steps. We then compare the performance of this model with both Robetta and Luke at 200,000 training steps. The results here shows that the Robetta with extra pre-training steps achieved similar performance as Robetta at 200,000 pre-training steps in two of the downstream tasks. Luke still has the strongest results, which shows that the state-of-the-art results from Luke is not because of the longer pre-training steps. And that's it for today's video. I really enjoy reading this paper. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe as I'll be covering more research papers in future videos. Meanwhile, feel free to check out other episodes of the series on the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys around next time.